Let me demonstrate the importance of layers when editing images. For this scene, we have the foreground with the subject, the mountains in the back and the sky at the top. We are going to apply different adjustments to each of those areas and turn this image into this final version using nothing more than Lightroom. If you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description. And now let's begin. First, as always, we want to start with the basic adjustments, but there's not much going on. So let's expand the basic panel. I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. Overall, this will lessen the contrast a little bit. And this, in turn, just gives me more control over the contrast. Then I want to slightly adjust the exposure. What I don't like are the harsh highlights in the subject. So I'm going to tone down the highlights a bit. And I also think I want to make the base image darker, at least the shadows. So that's the reason for me to bring them down. As I bring them down, I'm looking closely at the histogram, but you can see even dropping the shadows all the way, we still have room left in the darker areas. So that's perfect. Doing this will also help with uh, the look of the image. You can see the mountains in the back are getting, getting much darker, but the subject in the foreground will stay bright. So this helps to make the subject pop. And this is really the ultimate goal of the editing for this scene. Now I do want to bring up the whites just a little bit to further push the base contrast. And let's also bring down the blacks further, making the darker areas darker. I want to make the scene look sharp and clear. So that's the reason for me to bring up the texture, which will sharpen the image. And I'm also going to bring up the clarity, which will boost the midtones contrast. And finally, let's bring up the vibrance because I want to have a little more color in the scene. Perfect. So that is the base image. Let me deactivate the basic adjustments so you can see the difference from before to after. Overall, the whole scene got a lot darker. Now we're going to target the three different layers of this scene using masks. So go ahead, open up the masking panel. I would say let's start with the mountains in the back. Now selecting specific areas like this can be a little bit complicated. Let's try to keep it simple. I want to use a linear gradient first and I'm going to kind of select all of the mountain and I'm also kind of overlapping the foreground a little bit, as you can see. This is not something I want. So first I wanna get rid of the church. I'm going to click on subject and choose select subject. Lightroom should detect the church as the subject and thus we will get rid of the church from our linear gradient selection. Then we also don't want to change the sky because that's a layer on its own, which you want to target later on. So I'm going to say subtract and let's choose select sky. This works quite nicely, as you can see. Now we still have the bright foreground layer selected in some areas. What we can do is to subtract using the object selection tool and to make sure to activate the rectangle select because this just works better than the regular brush select mode. Once you have activated this, um, just draw a rectangle around all the foreground layers like this. And let's see if Lightroom will detect all the brighter areas of the foreground. Wonderful. As you can see, just like that, we have created a perfect mask for that mountain in the back. Now what we can do is to bring down the exposure, making it darker and thus the church will stand out even more in front of that dark mountain. I want to further darken the mountain in the back, but not the whole mountain, just the very top to add some more natural shadow to this area. So let me create a linear gradient. I'm going to kind of select the very top like this. Then again, we need to modify this mask because we only want to target that mountain. I'm going to subtract a sky mask and I'm also going to subtract a subject selection mask. Uh, actually, let's make that linear gradient a little bit smaller. I'm gonna rotate it a little as well and let's bring it up like this. Okay, this is looking good. Now what I'm going to do is to again, just simply bring, bring down the exposure and thus I'm making the top part of that mountain darker while the bottom part will stay just a little bit brighter, giving us a more natural light effect this way. Okay, now let me turn off just these two masks with which we targeted the mountain in the back and you will see a huge difference. This is our base image and that's the image with the masks applied on top. Looking so much better, but of course we can continue. I'm gonna use a simple linear gradient first for our foreground layer. 
I'm roughly targeting it like this. And I want to increase the exposure, which will intensify the light, which is hitting that foreground right here. Further separating this layer from the rest of the image. Of course, this linear gradient wasn't that precise, but again, we can make more precise selections using the object selection tool. So let's create a new mask, choose objects. And again, I'm just drawing a rectangle around that foreground layer like this. Once more, as you can see, we get a perfect selection for this very specific area. And all we need to do now is to further bring up the exposure to further separate this layer from the layers in the back. Wonderful. I do think I want to further modify this. Let me bring up the whites, further introducing brightness this way. Okay, I think I'm also going to bring up the blacks. And I do want to have some kind of warmer light in that in that bright spot right here. So I'm going to bring up the temperature just a notch, introducing these lovely yellow golden color tones. Wonderful, this looks great. Again, I want to turn off all the masks so we can get a better idea of the difference. So here's the base image and that's the image after just four masks. Now we worked on the foreground, we worked on the mountain in the back, now let's work on the third layer, the sky. Right now the sky is looking rather boring. I want to change that. So let me use a select sky mask. And I kind of want to make the top part of the sky darker while we do have some light in the bottom area. So I'm going to subtract a linear gradient and I'm taking out a part from the bottom. By the way, you can see the sky mask isn't really perfect. There are parts of the mountain selected. I could try getting rid of that using the subtract function and using the objects mask once more. Just drawing a rectangle around that mountain. Let's see what happens. This worked quite well. You can see there is a part of the sky also deselected now, but I'm going to crop it out later. So that's okay. And what I'm going to do now is to bring down the exposure just like this. Okay, I might want to bring up this linear gradient a little more to have a more visible gradient from bright to dark. I want to further work on that using a data linear gradient for the very, very top. Since the sky mask isn't working properly, in this case, I'm simply going to subtract another objects mask and I'm targeting that mountain again. I don't know what's going on here. Let's just subtract with a brush. All right, and then let's bring down the exposure to make the very top of the sky the darkest part of it. All right, that's looking super cool. Now, one more thing I want to do. Let's try something else. I want to just start with an objects mask and I'm going to draw a rectangle around the sky. This was working better than expected. Now I want to subtract the linear gradient and I'm taking out the top part of the sky, which I made darker previously. Now I'm going to target this area and make it brighter. So all I need to do is to bring up the exposure to add this light effect. Maybe I can even bring up the whites to make this light a little more obvious. But that's looking great. So that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before to after. And that's how we can target layers and specifically target lights and shadows to make the subject pop. Now we're not done with the editing yet. Let me continue with a little bit of color grading. Actually, let me first crop out the top part of the sky right here. I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift to nicely take out a part from every side of the image like this. And that's looking much better. I also think I want to denoise because we do have a bit of noise going on in the sky. So I'm going to head into the details tab first and let's click on denoise. All right, I'm not going to change anything here. Just hit the enhance button and that's looking much better. I forgot to collapse the film strip down below. I'm sorry for that. But now let's continue with the color grading. I'm starting in the color mixer. Let's begin with the hue. I just want to bring down the yellow hue just a little bit, making the foreground look a bit more orange-ish, just like this. Okay, now I also want to head into the luminance tab before working on the saturation. What I'm going to do in the luminance tab is to make the foreground brighter. The foreground is consisting mostly of these yellow tones, so I can use the yellow slider, bring it up, 
and thus we can make the foreground a lot brighter. Wonderful. As we bring up the luminance, we are going to lose a bit of saturation, but that's okay. I also want to bring up the red luminance, which will make the roof of the church brighter. So somewhere around here looks good to me. Then let's head over into the saturation tab. I want to bring up the red saturation just so the roof is a little more vibrant. I'm also going to bring up yellow and let's bring up blue as well, just for the sky. Wonderful. Then I'm going to head down into the calibration tab and do the thing I always do for my images. Bring down the blue primary hue and bring up the saturation. All right. Then we want to sharpen this image in the details tab. Let's go in here, bring down the radius, increase the details, add masking while holding down Alt key. We want to nicely target the subject like this and bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. Now the only thing left to do is to clean up this image. I'm going to do this in Photoshop because it's much faster. So right click on the image, go to edit in and choose open as smart object in Photoshop. I'm going to duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J just so I have a backup. Then I'm using the spot healing brush right here and let's zoom in. I want to get rid of these poles. These are very distracting so I'm just brushing over them. Also these lights. That's much better. And then there's a car coming up the hill, I think. And there's some grass blurry in the foreground like this. Just brushing over these things. And then we have some more stuff on the right side. Just want to point out, there are no sensor spots in here because I have cleaned my camera finally. And of course, there's a bigger car right here. Again, just brushing over it using the spot healing brush. This might look weird at first, but it's so far away in the distance, nobody will notice it. And for this car, I'm going to use the generative fill. That means I'm using the lesser tool right here with which I'm going to draw a very rough selection around the car. And once this is done, hit generative fill and then generate. Okay. And that's it for editing this image. I hope splitting this image up into three layers was understandable and will help you with your images in the future. If you have any questions left, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.